take one of those for it. The harvester? I also seek some information. Not escaped my attention, Harwell, but you still appear to have pennies to spare to fritter away on newspapers, despite your constant claims to impecuniosity. I trust it was not that self-same penny I lent you in church for the collection yesterday. I found a coin in the lining of my jacket pocket, Sarah, and I bought the newspaper in order to keep myself informed on the boxer situation. Informed of the bookmaking situation, more like. How's that? I'm sure that a perusal of those pages, however, would confirm my belief that they contain details of tomorrow's horse race gatherings. If you must know, Sarah, I bought this paper in order to engage that newsboy in conversation. What can you possibly hope to learn from the lips of a ragamuffin newsboy, pray? The location, perhaps, of a bootblack urchin. Child labourers, I have found, are often aware of each other's whereabouts. Had they seen him? No, but he knew someone who had. The hot potato man who stands just outside this park, Sarah. And I suppose you sent good money after bad and paid for the information you got at second hand from that hot potato man? Only another penny, Sarah. Thou must have a very deep lining to thy pockets, Harwell. Pennies for papers, pennies for information, pennies for this, pennies for that. A fool and his money are soon parted, Harwell Mincing. All in pursuit of a worthless dream. Look out! I said the little people were here about Sarah. The jackals are gathering. What am I doing? Hiding behind the Holy Bible. Where's that old fool off to now, I wonder? Using God's words to facilitate the devil's works. I always said that old billy goat knew more about this business than he cared to pretend. What depths of depravity will you drag me down to next? I shall follow him, Sarah, just to be on the safe side. If I'm not back within the hour, return to the apartment and I'll meet you there. Oh, I don't suppose in the event that I'm forced to take a cab, you'd care to subsidise such a... No. Forget I spoke. Where would we be without you, Spellbush? I know where we are with him. In a gravedigger's hut. It's not my fault. I didn't bring us here. He fetched us here last night in that. What a way to travel. In a boot black box. What a place to end up in. In a gravedigger's hut. I said all along we were wrong to throw in our lot with another child. Especially another boy. At least you were dry last night. It was pouring down. I had to look for somewhere to shelter, didn't I? If you don't want to stay with me, you can find your own way to sea. See, if I care, it's only about 50 million miles from here about. No, 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 we've made a bargain with you, boy. We'll, uh, see it through. What's beyond the graveyard, Spellbush? Can't see beyond the graveyard. Oh, there's something happening over there. It's a funeral. It can't be a very important funeral. It's not a very big procession. It isn't important at all. It's a contract funeral, a pauper's funeral. He looks quite important. The man was pulling the horse. Him? He's from parish. He's a children's officer. That last must be an orphan. He'll be going to ticket at Wickers when it's over. What's the Wickers? The Wickers. Wickers? That's another one I must remember. What does it mean? The workhouse, crackpot. What, that poor little girl? It's being taken to the workhouse. The word is workhouse, Fistrum. Tell me, boy, is it her desire, so to go? Desire? Nobody wants to go to workhouse, do they? She hasn't got no choice. I told you, he's the children's officer. He's taking her there. He'll drag her there if needs be. Then someone ought to intervene and rescue the poor child. Someone ought to, yeah. But who?
child. Come on. It's bitter, isn't it? The sooner that one's in the ground, the better. Are you all clear on what you have to do? Yes. Of course. Good. Boy. Boy. The box. Now, can you manage to carry both us and the garden rake? Yeah, easy. Off we go, then. There. Be sure you're not observed. At all. The old goat led me thrice round the duck pond and then straight back here. A complete wild goose chase. Don't you talk to me about wild goose chases, Harwell. Not after the idiotic madcap one you've led me on all these months. Bad enough when your fevered mind had you chasing mythical fairy folk, but mythical fairy folk in a mythical boot black urchins, mythical blacking boxes is stretching my Christian charity just a little bit too far. They are real, Sarah. And, and the boot boy, Urchin, he's real too. And that hag of a grandmother of his. Well, you met them yesterday, we gave them tuppence. And the boot black box that the little creatures dwell in, that's a tangible object too. All we have to do is to find them, and our future is assured. Bear with me one more week, Sarah. One more week, that's all I ask. And I promise you, the boy, the box, and the little creatures will be ours. Man that is born of woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, how are they doing? All right. You know what you've got to do? What about the rake? He's ready. Go on. Mr. Northweed. Oh. Much obliged, Mr. Elmwood. We therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Little girl, little girl, don't speak. Just nod or shake your head. Do you understand? Is it your wish to be taken to the workers? Good. Well, when the boy over there says run, run with him. Do you understand? Good. Good. 
It's a very nice drop of snuff you have there, Mr. Elmwood. It is indeed, sir. It is indeed. Well, the workhouse waits for neither man nor child. Indeed, Mr. Elmwood. She's had enough time to pay our last respects, I reckon. Run, Mas, run! We're free! Come on! Here, girl! Come back here this minute! Oh, 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 oh,
gone off. But I reckon he'll be back again soon enough. We can't hang around here for long. What happened to those little people? Adventurer, explorer, proud Lilliputian. I did not instigate and organize your entire rescue single-handed to be compared to a child's plaything. Entire? Entire rescue, Spellbush? Oh, I suppose my involvement in the adventure was so insignificant as to prove negligible. Single-handed? So I suppose you trust up the undertaker and the parish officer without any help at all from anybody. I said I instigated and organized the escapade. I wouldn't take any of the credit away from you to... As a matter of fact, you carried out your orders to the letter. Hmm. Thank you, Spellbush. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dork. Are they always arguing with each other? Most of the time. Ah, oh, when they're not round with each other, they're having a row with me. <laughs> Aren't they teeny? Aren't they bonny? They're a secret, though. You must never, ever tell anyone you've seen them. I shan't, I shan't. Make a promise. Go on, promise. Yeah, swear it. I, Emily Wilkins, do you swear on the grave of my poor dead mother to keep the secret. Yes. She could take her turn at carrying the, the box. box. <laughs> we'll put you to the vote. All those in favour of enlisting the girl into the expedition, please signify in true Lilliputian manner. Carried unanimously. Come along, boy. We've done it long enough. Pick us up and we'll be on our way. We can go now. Why not? Because there'll be every bobby and parish officer out searching city for her for the next two days at least. We can't stay here either. The cemetery's the first place I'll come back to search. We'll have to go back. Go, go back? A Lilliputian never goes back. We can't go back. We've set out for the sea. Go back? Where to? Back to photographers. A thousand, thousand plumstones on thy head, boy. No. We've got to lie low somewhere for a couple of days. It's not that far. If we can just sneak back up to that empty nursery. As chosen leader of this expedition, I absolutely and categorically forbid that we go back. You think of somewhere. On the other hand, if it's only for a day or two... Uh... in the gardens this side. I'll try over here. Are you looking for someone? Aye, that I am. The young lass that escaped from the workhouse. And the lad that's with her that assaulted me. Well, certainly not in my garden. I've been here for the past half hour, officer, and I can assure you they haven't gone past me. And I can vouch for that. I've been in the washhouse all morning, boiling whites, and there ain't nobody gone through there. Well, if you do see them, then you will know how to contact me, won't you? I will indeed. Thank you for informing me of the situation. Out you come, you fugitives from law and order. Well, I never, sir. I never thought I'd live to see the day when you was guilty of a whopper. Nothing of the sort, Millie. I told them they weren't in the garden. And they weren't. They were in the greenhouse. Now do you believe I don't mean you any harm? But if you ain't going to turn the rug... 
if you ain't gonna turn the ragamuffins in, sir, what are you gonna do with them? Tee them up for a beginning. That's your department. Mine, sir. Yours and Cook's. Baths being the first order of the day. Have them as bright and shining as a couple of the Queen's own troopers. Then, uh, kit them out. Kit them out, sir, but what with... If with... I'm not mistaken, there's a trunk full of grandchildren's clothing somewhere on the premises. <gasps> then, when the pair of them are fit for CO's parade, march them into the dining room and we'll see about some rations. You wouldn't say no to a spot of lunch from I don't suppose. Well, come along then. This way. <laughs> I reckon I ain't seen nothing disappear quite so fast in my entire life. Feel better for it, I'll be bound. What I want to know, sir, is uh, mm? what you're going to do with them now they're tidied up and fed fit to bust. Exactly the problem that's been puzzling okay. me, Millie. You uh, may no I have some huh? I suppose they could manage pro tem in the spare bed. You ain't intending to keep them, sir. Why not? What did you imagine I intended to do with them? They ain't yours to keep, sir. Then whose are they, may I ask? Emily here is a fugitive from the workhouse. You're not, I hope, suggesting I should send her back. Oh, no, sir, of course not, as if I would. And as for Ernest? I run off for me grandma. Precisely, because she led the lad a dog's life. Not all the same, sir, if she is, he's great. She's mm. not. Not me real gran, only a call to that. Same as a call the fellows with before me uncle. I'm not a woman of all that, me am. I don't really belong to any of them. I'm an orphan, really, just like him. There you are, Simile. Another candidate for the poor house. But that don't mean you can keep them here, sir, bless your heart. There's police and that seeking eye and low for them, or will be. They'll track them down. You see if they don't, in spite of all your good intentions, they'll find them here within the week. Then they won't be here, Millie. Until something has been arranged about their futures, I shall take them where they can't be found. <laughs> but take them where, sir? I don't know. Somewhere that'll put some roses in their cheeks. It's time I had a break myself, and you shall come as well. I don't know where, yet, but I'll wager they won't turn up their noses at the seaside, hmm? Seaside? Yes, please. <laughs>